I've had this video idea for a while now. There are just some movies that I can't stop thinking about for days, weeks, even months after watching them. They aren't the best movies I've seen, but they each have me thinking about them occasionally. There won't be a particular order except for the first one being the inspiration for the list. I'll try to remain spoiler free, but I will mark any spoilers when they do pop up. This was the first movie that really made me think about this concept. I watched it in my foreign language films class, and I enjoyed it. It was one of the shortest movies we watched, but felt like the longest. I talked more about this in the video about the foreign film class. Something about this movie I just couldn't stop thinking about. It essentially is just the journey down the Amazon River and Aguirre's insanity spiraling out of control. I especially couldn't stop thinking about the last shot of the film. Combined with the ending monologue, it just holds so much power to the story and its conclusion. This is probably the first movie to live rent-free in my mind, but I didn't think about the concept for several years. Angel's Egg is an anime movie from 1985, which was made as a collaboration between the illustrator Yoshitaka Amano, who is probably best known for his art in the Final Fantasy franchise, and illustrations for Vampire Hunter D and the Gin Saga and director Oshi Mamoru, who is best known for the first two Ghost in the Shell movies and Jinro Wolf Brigade, as well as the original manga series Kerberos Panzer Kopf. This is a surreal movie about a little girl who's caring for a large egg. She comes across a soldier who follows her to observe her and her egg. I've watched this movie about five times now just because I couldn't stop thinking about it. There's little dialogue, so the animation and score beautifully express the world and the characters. There's a particular scene that I was so blown away by because of how grand the score was and the reveal of a large skeleton. It's so beautiful. It's difficult to mark spoilers because of the lack of a straightforward story. It's really an experience. There are a few interesting video essays on YouTube about the meaning behind Angel's Egg to check out afterwards. The Seventh Seal is a classic Ingmar Bergman film from 1958. It's set in medieval Sweden during the Black Plague, and we follow a knight who plays a game of chess with death. Along the way, we meet a family of traveling performers, among many other characters. It's another slow movie, third in a row. I'm still not too sure how I feel about this movie, but it has haunted me. There is a specific scene where everyone is enjoying a performance, but the mood is suddenly interrupted by a group of flagellants walking through the village, led by a priest preaching that the plague was brought on by God and that everyone should repent. It was breathtaking how it was filmed and it just really, really haunted me. The ending is beautiful too, but this scene in particular stunned me. The next movie on this list is Gaspar Noe's 2019 film, Climax. This is also the first film in recent years to disturb me throughout a good portion of the runtime. The plot is about a dance group in the 90s rehearsing in an abandoned school, but all hell breaks loose when they unknowingly drink punch spiked with LSD. This is not a film, but an experience. The first half consists of interviews with the dancers, the rehearsal, and just random conversations between like different characters among little cliques and stuff. The title credits play in the middle of the film when the LSD takes effect. The last half is anxiety inducing. It felt like I was the only sober person in the building, forced to wander around and watch everyone just go crazy under the influence. The second half is also primarily one long unbroken shot. It freaked me out, but I enjoyed it. As per usual for most of Noe's films, it's not for everyone, so watch with caution. There are documentaries, and there are mockumentaries. Punishment Park lies in between as a pseudo-documentary. Peter Watkins is a British filmmaker that is known for his thought-provoking pseudo-documentaries, playing with current issues in a slightly different direction, an alternate history of sorts. In 1971, the Vietnam War was a very prominent political debate. 
Punishment Park is an alternate universe where draft dodgers, hippies, and protesters slash rioters are often given two options in trial, serve time in jail or participate in Punishment Park. Those who choose Punishment Park have to travel across the desert without food or drink and reach the goal. There are soldiers I observe and make sure no one escapes. There are people who try the course earnestly and there are people who try to fight back. The director narrates the time and the temperature and he also interviews both the participants and the soldiers. It's a stressful film and it feels very real. Part of that realism is because the actors played the characters that shared their actual ideals. The protesters and draft dodgers were actually played by protesters and draft dodgers and the judges and soldiers were played by people who held more conservative ideas. The ending is startling given like how stuff spirals out of control and it left me a little hollow. This film is harrowing. If you want a good, brutally realistic anti-war film, watch this film from the Soviet Union, come and see. It follows an optimistic young boy named Fliora joining the Soviet resistance against the Germans during World War II. The only requirement being he had to bring his own gun, and he quickly sees the true horrors of war. When we finally see death, it's startling. It just happens without fanfare. The worst of it is witnessing a village being raided by Nazi soldiers and how they're enjoying every little bit. This next section we'll be talking about spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled on this, go ahead and go to the timestamp on the screen and you should be good. At the end of the film, some survivors captured a handful of the Nazi soldiers that terrorized their village and are about to exact revenge. One soldier disgustingly tries to appeal to them as he didn't know what they were doing and he didn't participate and he is old and has grandchildren at home. In comparison, a different soldier proudly admits to their crimes with no regret in a different show of disgusting nature. He clearly sees no wrongdoing with whatever they did and he doesn't care. They're shot, but it doesn't feel like justice was exacted. The war is still going on and there are still many more villages and people being horrifically tortured and murdered. The war won't end until two years later. It's astonishing to compare how Fliora looked at the beginning of the film to the end. And the events of this film only happened over the course of five or six days. It made me feel empty, but that's a good thing. I think it's a fantastic film and needs to be shown to more people. It's on YouTube with English subtitles, but watch at your own discretion. Winner of the Best Film and Best Foreign Film Oscars of 2019, Parasite might be the most well-known movie on this list. It's a South Korean movie about the poor Kim family slowly invading the rich Park family's home, posing as a tutor, a maid, a chauffeur, and an artist. The first half is kind of lighthearted and more comedic, until the second half reveals a whole new disturbing aspect. It is a movie about classism, but I like how it flips the usual narrative on its head. In most films about extreme class division, the poor family is always good and the rich family is always evil. But in the first half at least, the Kim family is portrayed as cunning and not the best people, but still human as they do what they do to try and get out of poverty. The Park family is portrayed as a fairly nice, but something seems off behind the scenes. There's also a fascinating reoccurring concept of poor people having a scent. The Kims don't notice it, but the patriarch Park Dong Ik frequently brings it up. The idea is that the Kims are unable to run away from their class status, but I also related to the fact that the scent of your surroundings do linger on your clothes, something that is more prominent in a dingy home. The final movie I'm going to discuss is the 2008 French film Martyrs. There was an American remake in 2015, but I haven't seen it and I heard that's bad anyway. The film is about Lucy going to take revenge on the family that abused her when she was a child and her friend Anna attempting to stop her, only to find out something more horrific. It's a grisly film, but the most visually unnerving part for me was the woman with the metal blindfold stapled to her scalp, even more so than the end. We even get the joy of watching the staples being removed. I recommend going into this movie blind as it builds up more of the mystery and intrigue. Thus concludes the list of films that live rent-free in my mind. I just wanted to talk about them as that's the effect they have on me. The movies on this list I'd recommend the most would probably be Aguirre, The Wrath of God, Come and See, and Martyrs, for very different reasons. Aguirre, just because I think it's an interesting film, uh, Come and See for the brutal honesty of war, and Martyrs just because I love the movie. <laughs> I hope you all found this video somewhat interesting and found some new films to watch. Feel free to comment down below if you've seen or heard of any of these movies and what your thoughts were on them, or if you're interested in watching any of these movies.
Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.